Over my life, I have deconstructed and reconstructed more than once. This is more than likely my final deconstruction and expect the reconstruction will be an ongoing process for the rest of my life, however long that may prove to be. At this stage in my life which can accurately be called the twilight hours, I like the photography term the golden hour and the blue hour. It takes in roughly the last four or five hours of daylight. It is a point when I am more comfortable writing my thoughts than speaking, and thanks to artificial intelligence, I can write and, in a way, speak this to anyone interested. This narrative is written in my own words. It represents my own thoughts and my journey of reconstructing my ontological and epistemological understanding of my reality. While it would be somewhat accurate to call it spiritual, that term is not sufficient to encompass this reconstruction narrative. I am writing to share it and not to try to convince anyone they should adopt it. I am sharing it because I have found the stories shared by others helpful and that is my motivation. I actually think that more people should share their stories. This is true even if they are unfolding, morphing, and changing in real time. Mine is as well, but it is crystallizing to a degree for me at this point. I want to digress for a moment by discussing the scientific and the legal community. I think there is something pertinent from both. I think that the legal concepts that we have today could be helpful in presenting philosophical ideas. Specifically, the burden of proof necessary in civil cases. It is less than in criminal cases. The jury is admonished to decide cases based on the preponderance of evidence. The preponderance of evidence is merely 51% to 49%. If the evidence appears to an individual juror to be leaning at least 51% in one way or another they are told to make a decision based on that. I personally think that is a little too low. I would be more comfortable with 70% to 85%. In describing and explaining my reconstruction journey I hold myself to that standard. It could never be beyond a reasonable doubt because it is subjective and strictly my view in the end. It certainly would not measure up to scientific standards to make it a theory, but for philosophical ideas, I think that standard is way too rigid. We as a society have sent many people to either the electric chair, the gas chamber, or the lethal injection table based on the testimony of witnesses. In the end, anyone's reconstruction story is based on the testimony of a witness. The witness is the one telling the story. In this case, that is me. Having laid that groundwork, I will begin this narrative. I hope to present it in 7 to 10 minute bites for as long as it takes. I hope to hold your interest to hear me out, but that will be up to you and your availability of time. I look at this in much the same way you would view the opening arguments of a trial. I am presenting my case. One of my friends says that words matter and another points out that communication of abstract ideas is difficult and requires a lot of effort to be understood. I agree wholeheartedly. So here are the first words that describe where I am at in reconstruction. I am a philosophical idealist, pan-psychist that has embraced the paradox of pantheism and panentheism. I have completely deconstructed an anthropomorphic idea of deity. I really do not like the term deity as it has way too much connotative baggage, so my idea of any god form is best described by creative consciousness. That is my starting point. My opening argument is that the foundation of reality is consciousness. Over the course of these narratives, I will try to present a preponderance of evidence of why it is a reasonable position. I will draw from a variety of expert sources that I have studied and encountered. They are composed of current philosophers, physicists, cognitive scientists, and biologists. In addition, I draw from psychologists and other scientists and philosophers that are recent within the last 150 years. It is probably sufficient for this first installment to simply name them. They include but may not be limited to, Donald Hoffman, Bernardo Kastrup, Seth Lloyd, Nima Arkani Hamed, Max Planck, Rupert Sheldrake, Carl Jung, Alfred North Whitehead, and Michael Levin. There are others, but these are prime. In addition, I also will rely on Hermeticism, Taoism, and other idealist philosophies that range over millennia. They all point to consciousness as being primal to reality. Finally, and perhaps a little more toward the Wu factor is recent developments in the UFO phenomenon and how it may indeed relate to consciousness over millennia as well. Finally, 
I will include my views on Christianity and how I view the scripture these days. I need to include it because I was born into evangelical fundamentalism, deconstructed from it, returned to it in midlife, and shortly thereafter began another deconstruction reconstruction that has landed me here. I hope you will join me in this narrative, not to establish a dogmatic belief, but to understand and incorporate anything from my journey that may resonate with yours. If you find this interesting please like, subscribe, comment and share. Thanks for watching.